He had been brought up to be an aristocrat and a ruler. To emulate the mythical heroes. But all this had led to was conflict and feuding, death and exile, power struggles amongst an aristocratic elite. How could Athens ever escape from this pointless cycle of violence? Even as Cleisthenes agonized in exile, Athens was rocked by an extraordinary event. Like their mythical heroes, the ordinary people of Athens now took their destiny into their own hands. Pythagoras and his Spartan allies blockaded themselves atop the Acropolis, the high point of the city. But even there, they could not escape the fury of the common Athenians. For two days and nights, Pythagoras held out against this extraordinary uprising. Until finally, on the morning of the third day, he was forced to surrender. The year was 508 BC. This would be Athens' first step to empire and glory. For the first time in recorded history, the people had turned on their rulers and seized power for themselves. Athens at this point is in control of the mob, the ordinary people who had risen up without organized leadership, and then the question is, what happens now? At this new dawn, the Athenian people now turn to one man. A figure whose life, whose experiences and disappointments had given him a unique vision. Cleisthenes was recalled from exile and asked to build a government. When Cleisthenes returned to Athens after the expulsion of the Spartans, he faced a really remarkable challenge. There was no possibility for just simply putting back in power a group of aristocrats. There was no possibility for him to declare himself tyrant. In a sense, what Cleisthenes had to do is design a revolutionary governmental solution for a revolutionary political situation. For Cleisthenes, the problem was how to give his fellow Athenians the say in their future that he knew they must now have. On an Athenian hillside, he had a great meeting place carved out from the bare rock. Here, in the shadow of the Acropolis, the citizens of Athens could now gather to discuss the future of their state. On these very steps, rich and poor alike could stand and address their fellow citizens. This is the ancestor of the British House of Commons, the American Congress of Parliaments across the world. 
and where government had once been decided by the strength of a sword arm or the thrust of a sharpened spear, Cleisthenes instituted the simple vote. A white pebble for yes, a black pebble for no. And with this elegant and simple idea, Cleisthenes instituted the rule of the people. A system of government which we now know as democracy. The Great Athenian Assembly would gather every nine days to vote on issues covering the entire administration of the state. From the raising of taxes to the building of roads. From the price of figs to the declaration of war. Athenian democracy is a very different sort of democracy from ours. One has a sense, as an Athenian citizen, that you really can make a difference. There is no us and them. There is no government separate from the ordinary Athenian citizen body. They are the government. Democracy represented a sharp break an originally elitist, heroic culture was now turned on its head and the idea was that even ordinary Greeks who weren't aristocratic, who were not rich, could be, as it were, heroes in politics. It was a system of government that would transform this tiny state and would set off one of the greatest flowerings of civilization the world had ever seen. It's not just an accident that you had democracy and you had this tremendous flourishing of culture. Uh, I think that democracy really does, in a very real way, unleash, make, make possible potentials within human societies that are very unlikely to be unleashed, to be made actual in any other way. The Athenians would take what had been the greatest achievements of the ancient world and transform them. They would take the monumental pyramids and temples of the Egyptian pharaohs and with them build an architecture of grace and splendor. They would take the myths and tales of the traveling bards and transform them into theater, entertainment for a whole city. And the great stone sculptures of Assyria and Egypt would be remade with an intimacy and emotion that still touches us today.